sugar. I'm quitting sugar. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. I couldn't I can't I couldn't help clickbaiting this, especially given the topic of recent vlog <laughs> conversations. But uh, first of all, let me update you on the little sneaky peek that you got in the last vlog. It's progressing very nicely. I'm, I'm giving you an a, a intentionally obscured preview because I don't want to show off too much, but let's just say my dome painting is working really well and it's very, very satisfying. Anyways, that's all I'll show. Um, but I actually wanted to start a different chain of conversation rather than, oh, how's, you know, how's the YouTube treadmill going, which is always going to be a conversation we come back to. But there's, uh, I also like to share the things that are currently obsessed, I'm currently obsessing over. Um, and over the course of the last few years, I've slowly been quitting different things, specifically um, substances, I guess you'd call them. Starting back a couple of years ago, I quit drinking alcohol. And then further to that, more recent, I'd say like half a year ago now, almost, yeah, I'd say half a year ago, uh, I quit coffee. Uh, as someone who had always drunk like three or four coffees a day at least, um, I just, you know, I don't like things that beckon more of the thing. You know what I mean? So like I'm an all or nothing sort of person and with both coffee and alcohol, they were things that if I would have a little, I'd end up having a lot and it's just obviously not good for me. Um, and then more recently, and so far it's been almost two weeks, I'm quitting sugar. Obviously, I can't avoid some sugars. I'll have an apple, you know, but added sugar specifically and processed foods. And it's interesting how, and this is sort of, again, part of this process of, of sort of finding the things that, like identifying the things that bring me long-term unhappiness or unhealth, even if I'm not aware of it in in the time or also like we're just generally not aware of it because we're surrounded by it and sugar is one of those things that you know the more i sort of look into it and learn about it it's like definitely not necessary but definitely everywhere and i think affects me quite a lot i actually think has always affected me a lot more than i've been aware especially as someone who uh, used to struggle with an eating disorder which i've also shared uh with you guys in the past um, as someone who's like feels a lock, a lack of control around food and sugar, I think is the catalyst for what triggers my need for more of the thing. So I've tried in the last couple of weeks, just cutting it out. And the first like four or five days were pretty awful. Like I was getting headaches. I felt like constantly like, you know, before quitting sugar, I would just eat crap in the evenings. Like i it wouldn't be too bad throughout the day. I'd have like a cookie or a snack or whatever throughout the day. But then when I get home and especially late at night, I just eat cheesecake and macaroons and just like every 20 minutes would be a new sugary snack, which is obviously not great. So the, the withdrawals of the first like three or four days were pretty like felt pretty oppressive, but then all of a sudden it was just like gone um, and for the rest of the time, which has been over a week now, it's like a revelation. <laughs> like I feel really good. And the, I think the biggest difference I've noticed is aside from not craving stuff, I'm not like, I, I'm just full quicker cause I'm focusing on like protein and fats. Oh, I'm showing too much of my piece. Ooh. So like, you know, when I eat dinner or like, I'll eat the meat, I'll eat the, um, what a, you know, avocado, um, the salads and all that stuff. And then I'll save a little bit of the carbs at the end to try and keep my um, insulin and blood sugar lower. And as a result, I'm just like starting to leave stuff on my plate at the end. I'm all, I've always been a plate finisher, but to actually not to actually feel satiated and not have finished my plate or meal is kind of like this is I'm 35 years old this is the first time I'm experiencing that in a reoccurring way and then also not thinking about food all the time um so yeah I just thought I'd share that with you because I like sharing things that impact me substantially and it's an ongoing discovery but I wanted to share it uh, for a few reasons. One, because I'm excited by it and I'm feeling a really positive change for me personally. And it's, I think, worth 
sharing and talking about. But also it's worth asking, like, have you, uh, has anyone watching this sort of experienced something like that, whether it be quitting alcohol, coffee, sugar, or anything else? What has your experience been and what are your recommendations? What has your journey been? I think it's just sort of worth sharing. And also if this is a conversation people are interested in, I'm more, I'm an open book, probably too much, <laughs> sorry, to be honest. Um, but I really like discussing stuff that um, I guess might be considered not taboo, but like, I don't know. I don't know what the word for it is, but like, I don't think stuff should be not talked about. I think it's better that we just like talk about stuff and share what we learn and what benefits us because that's how we like, you know, it's the first thing, like with all of those things, when I quit alcohol, when I quit coffee, when I quit sugar, it's been super helpful for me to find other people who have gone through that experience and just sort of listen to their experience and, and what they share. And I think being a part of that is something I find gratifying. So I'd be interested in also hearing from you guys, but also if you have any questions, for me, just let me know in the comments down below and I can do a future vlog on it. But anyways, that is a random thing I wanted to share that wasn't on this constant conversation of being a YouTuber. <laughs> Honestly, I have to I have to say, just as an update to that though anyway, um, I'm, I'm feeling like it's, I think it's a journey. I think everyone knows that. And I don't like the idea that like, these vlogs are just going to be a check-in on my mental wellness. And it always makes me a bit self-conscious where if I feel like I overshare too much or if I open up in a you know, fairly vulnerable way, that then I need to sort of account for that or answer to that for the coming weeks or months, whatever it is, so people feel updated or whatever. But honestly, um, I'm, I feel like I've got a really good direction. And I think this project, having something that is ambitious and also tricky as a video, but not thinking at all about the video performance and just focusing on making something that I'm really proud of and feeling that, like getting lost in that process has been really good for me. And it feels silly that I, that that isn't, hasn't, that that's sort of been a little bit lost over time because of the nature of YouTube and how it sort of warps your mind to focus on the, the stuff that doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, like just, reframing my approach to focusing on the thing I'm making in front of me and what I'd like it to be creatively and being satisfied that by that process has been really fulfilling and I just anyway me oversharing again let me know your comments and thoughts down below I'm looking forward to seeing your questions and I appreciate you thanks for watching